Uh, tēnei te mihi ki a koutou, um, kei ngā mare kura, kei ngā whatu kura o te motu, uh, tukuana mihi, uh, ki ngā hapu, um, ki ngā hāpuri o Aotearoa. Um, hurina mihi ki a koe e te rangatira Daniel uh, mō tō pōtai, um, ki tēnei whakawhiti kōrero, um, kō wai au, um, he uri nō nā te kauwhata, nā te haua, uh, nā nā te matakore ki te reo reo, nā te raukaua ki te tonga, um, nō reira ko Bridget Tukingoa, ko Raiha Tikua Māori, um, ki te tau toko pōtai ki roto i tēnei wānanga, um, he kaiarehi mō toki mahi. Um, nō reira, tukona mahi kia koutou. Uh, welcome everyone, no mai whakapiri piri mai, um, to our webinar session on behalf of CSPR. Um, I will let, probably pass the rako over to Daniel to introduce himself, um, who he is, what he does in his um, university space, and also our connection to our cybersecurity research program. Namahi kia koe, Daniel. Kia ora, Bridget. Uh, kia ora, Koto. Uh, Heri tēnei nō Ngāpui me Ngāti Pikiao. Ko Daniel Wilson tō ko ingoa. I'm a, uh, I teach computer science at Waipapa Tomatoro, the University of Auckland. I've been involved in the, the cybersecurity research program uh, for uh, somewhere between a year and two years. COVID kind of blurs the timeline. So, <laughs> um, so my role, I guess my interests, I've got a broad variety of interests. So artificial intelligence, this program touches on artificial intelligence. Um, I'm interested in privacy as well, and one of the projects focuses on keeping information confidential. Um, so I'll talk about that a bit more as well. But the, the cybersecurity research program, um, broadly speaking, is sort of three research projects that are bundled under one program. And the goal is for Aotearoa as a, as a regional cybersecurity hub. And the, the Māori Advisory Board is one part of this, this program to focus on how cybersecurity uh, is relevant for Māori and Māori organisations, um, trying to find a space that's useful but not uh, duplicating mahi that's already going on in cybersecurity. Um, so the, there are three projects and one of them, I, I guess, shall I, shall I speak to the sort of the, the Māori Advisory Board? Um, yes. Okay, all right, we'll do the Māori Advisory Board first. So a big mihi to Vanessa Clark, who has mm -hmm. been with us since the start and has now um, moved on to other <laughs> technology adventures. Um, so Vanessa has been part of the, the Māori Advisory Board and, and Bridget has come on mm -hmm. earlier this year. So uh awesome to have you bridget it yeah. feels like it feels like a new start <laughs> now that we've got some sort of uh dedicated um yeah dedicated time to put into this program um also graham everton who might be draw joining us a bit later fingers crossed <laughs> uh and also lisa davis um from nati fatua or um, she's with me in the, the Waipapa Tomatoro sort of arm of the Māori Advisory Board. Um, so there have been a, a bit of a mix of, sort of academic Māori representation as well as um, those who've got stronger industry connections. And the idea is to try and, and bridge this. So um, there is a kind of a, a start line with respect to cybersecurity for, for Māori organisations that um, it, it's almost like we need the, the capability built up uh, and broader awareness uh, to move forward with cybersecurity. So this is kind of a, an opportunity for capacity building and awareness raising, I think, the mm -hmm. cybersecurity program and the Māori Advisory Board um, and what we do. So we want to do a number of things. So one is yeah, raise the profile of cybersecurity. 
um, because you know having more robust systems you know, any organization who has data um, is at risk of cybersecurity threats but having strong sort of cybersecurity uh, measures facilitates things like rangatira tanga so you've got the you know control over your data and kaitiaki tanga so protecting sensitive information making sure that you know you only release what you want to release not what others um, can take from you um, so we're wanting to do a bit of work in that space of uh, capacity building there are a number of organizations that work in cybersecurity training and and bridget you might sort of speak to some of that a bit later with uh topu toa um, and the mahi that's going on there um but part of the i mean one of the thoughts is you know there's a lot of talk about sort of capability building and then you know we have um toeira come through and develop certain capabilities and then they're off in the multinational organizations so how do we sort of have a, a kind of a, a maori flow not just from training going into other organizations but um, assisting maori organizations um, and bringing that knowledge back and yeah a couple of other things i guess sort of developing some tools for for raising awareness um, that are useful and some mm -hmm. practical resources yeah so i guess that's that's broadly what we're about yes. is there anything you'd want to add there there bridget absolutely i think um you definitely covered our multi advisory board and sort of our um our key goals that we have in terms of one building capacity in our multi space <clears throat> around cyber security and also being the connection between those that are um, massaging our capacity and ensuring that there's like an ecosystem or it flows back into our Māori community. Um, because you just touched on a little bit, Daniel, that a lot of the time in these cybersecurity academies, we build our Māori capacity to give them back into mainstream spaces. Um, and I think the wonderful opportunity that I have in my role is to connect a lot of the academies, um, Manu Kurato, um, to the tour program at the moment, into iwi spaces that can help on the ground. Um, I just want to acknowledge our three researchers um, that sit side by side a Māori advisory board, which is Julian Jacquard, um, Vamal from Waikato University, and also Giovanni Russell. And the three spaces that they occupy um, in cybersecurity, um, cryptography, and AI. Um, so I, I think I have a question before I go into more depth as to sort of the groundwork that we're doing and that we are going to continue to do for the next few months, Daniel. I have a question for you, sort of connects us to the research space that Gillian and Giovanni and Vimal are currently working on alongside us is how do you feel the opportunity or what do you think opportunity would be and how we decolonize um, or we um, strengthen to our Māori and AI? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, this kind of connects with another the project, uh, the Tikanga and Technology project, which is on... <laughs> decolonizing algorithms and I think you know we we're sort of trying to work through there was a AI wānanga uh, a couple of months ago mm -hmm. and that was really great because to have uh, you know a massive room of uh, Māori technologists thinking through artificial intelligence uh, in different facets and and getting feedback as well um, was really cool so I mean that was a great discussion because we kind of did have a model um, that's got a lot of sort of different points at which decisions are made mm -hmm. and usually at which there are a bunch of assumptions that uh, that are just taken for granted in, in centralized organizations um, around you know whose views ought to be involved where did the data come from um, is this particular algorithm or method appropriate here um, so there's a there's a lot about 
you know, having the right people and perspectives in the right place. So there's an element of, kind of the governance aspect as well as the design aspect and also thinking about uh, how this is going to be used into the future. I mean, there are all sorts of, uh, you know, connections with Maori data sovereignty, but also the algorithm specific uh, issues uh, of which there are plenty. So there are sort of eight different points or so something like that at which there are there are a whole host of different <laughs> questions that can be made. And yeah, this is relevant to uh, there are a couple of these research projects that are part of the cybersecurity research program that uh, that overlap they involve artificial intelligence. So one of them is the artificial intelligence for automating responses to threats um, mm -hmm. that Graham's been involved in and hopefully we'll see him sometime soon because it'd be good to talk <laughs> have him discuss what he's been doing in the in the 5G space and planning to do. Um, so there's, there's room for overlap there. Um, and there's also, you know, artificial intelligence for human centric security, which is um, Vimal's area. So using AI to try and uh, examine, examine existing networks to see whether there might be potential for threats and having um, AI assist with that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit tricky when you've got programs that come in with established ways of doing things, or, you know, sometimes their focus is on certain technical aspects, but there are other social aspects that need to be questioned as well. <laughs> and yeah, this, this kind of reframing uh, needs a bit of work. So yeah, there are these aligned projects like the, as I say, the Tikang and Technology Project, which is under development to try and um, assist with that. That was a bit rambling. <laughs> I think that one of the beautiful things that um, that this research program has gifted us is the opportunity to apply some of our te ao Māori models, um, our, even our tangible, um, significant um, sites for us as Māori, like the whare. And I know Graham's touched on it before and I can't wait for I cannot wait for Graham to join us shortly um, about how a whare can be replicated um, and how we deliver AI and how we um, uh, articulate cybersecurity from a te ao Māori perspective. Um, we see it a lot in health spaces and other spaces, and I think it's so important that we recognise that a lot of our tikanga te ao Māori can be applied in the digitisation space and cybersecurity and AI as well which leads me to my next pass by Daniel. Um, and I'm sorry that I feel like I'm picking on you, but at the moment, Graham is currently Casper. So we're just going to go with you for the panel at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, future proofing for us is Māori. What do you think are the current threats um, that we need to be aware of um, in terms of cybersecurity or AI that could impact our sort of cultural practices? I guess one thing just sort of thinking through this morning is is an over reliance on on others <laughs> systems right that aren't set up um you know that they're, they're set up for a certain set of concerns and they might shift some things to kind of adapt a little bit to try and accommodate maori interests but at the root sometimes the the systems and even the way data is structured um, may not be appropriate. So, um, I mean, it's complex. There's the, we've already sort of touched on just building capacity and capability um, is not enough if there's not this, the environment <laughs> in which you can have uh, Māori getting together to build these, these systems. So some sort of, uh, I don't know, it'd be nice to have some sort of innovation hub. <laughs> um, because, yeah, an over-reliance on, on other systems is kind of leaving yourself open a bit. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, you really need the skills there in order to build up the tools that you need. Because, you know, thinking about one of these research projects is on encryption. 
in some ways you you know you don't want to be reinventing uh, what's already been done you want to have the expertise to be able to pull together the different components um, you know that are appropriate and will keep you safe so that requires some infrastructure as well as the capacity and capability building um, as well as the resources <laughs> and the community i think absolutely um well thank you Dan. I think um, at the moment, I think I'm going to touch on um, before Graham arrives. He's just about to come on very shortly. Um, so he'll be my next person that I get to pick on and, um, and just pick his card on things. But I thought I would share um, in this webinar about sort of the practical things and the operational things that we're doing in our space at the moment and the partnerships and what our goals are. So at the moment, for our Māori Advisory Board and our Cybersecurity Research Program, <clears throat> We are nurturing a relationship at the moment with Manu Kurato, um, which uh, the cybersecurity team that sits alongside our Māori Health Authority Board. And they are creating an academy that starts in February next year, um, targeting Māori um, and those um, building capacity really in the cybersecurity space. And one of the things that is really important for the academy itself for Manukura To is to ensure that the intention is ticker um, of why we want to build capacity and that capacity means that it feeds back to our people, to our iwi entities, to our Māori businesses um, and future proofing that space. We're really excited because it also gives our Māori advisory board and our researchers the opportunity to further our research below, uh, beyond July and look at <clears throat> providing data which signals where our critical priorities are and how cybersecurity can assist those spaces in our Māori spaces, um, which aligns with what the, currently the Academy want to achieve. So that's one relationship that we are, we are strengthening at the moment. Um, and they too have uh, two, I would say, but like to keyword to Kitty, where you've got one Ropu who is Te Tanga Te Tiriti and the other one who is Tanga Te Whenua. Um, that's how their makeup is too in their team. And the second relationship that we, uh, at the moment, it's a loose relationship that we hope to strengthen by the end of the year is with Tuputua. Tuputua are a Māori and Pacifica, Pacifica internship academy. Um, that offer university students internships for 12 weeks, paid internships. And this year, it's really exciting for them that it will be the first year that they're offering cybersecurity internships for Māori and Pacifica students across New Zealand. Um, they've just partnered with Microsoft. So uh, at the moment, the needs that they have for our group is really just to um, support the students with the how and a toolkit. So we have some mahi ahead of us, Daniel, Graham and myself, and a few other lucky Māori um, in our group to create this beautiful toolkit that enables our, um, our interns, our Māori and Pacifica interns to um, feel competent by the end of their 12 weeks, that this is a space that they can see themselves in. Um, so those are the two sort of exciting projects that we're working on alongside of the, our main researchers. Um, the next thing I was going to touch on, Daniel, was the cryptography space that Stephen was doing. And I was wondering if you could just give a little brief description of what that is for our people that are listening, um, for those that don't know, um, and quantum computing um, and what that means for us in the future and what that could potentially mean for us as Māori. Sure, yeah. Um, so Stephen Galbraith is, um, he's in the Department of Mathematics here as a professor and he's worked on uh, cryptographic schemes for you know, taking data, moving it from plain text into something that's only readable by those who are intended to read it. Um, and there have been some developments going on in, in terms of quantum computing. So regular computers um, work with bits, um, which are, you know, the word is binary digits. You've got things that are either zero or one. Those are their only states. And a lot of the encryption methods that we use 
when you're shopping online, when you're doing online banking, you know, transferring your credit card details and so forth. It's all kind of, there's a layer hidden underneath there doing this encryption work. And the way that they're measured as being robust is based on uh, how much computing time you would need to, to break these codes really, solve these mathematical problems. Uh, and the thing is, there's been predictions of quantum computing. Quantum computers are a bit different. They're not based fundamentally on these bits. They're, they're based on something called qubits, where you've got these something like bits, but they can be both um, zero and one at the same time until they're read. But basically, it opens up all sorts of computing opportunities for speeding things up. So these things that we thought might take thousands or tens of thousands of years to solve, you know, that keep our encryption, current encryption methods safe. In theory, there are algorithms that have been developed if quantum computers become mainstream um, that can make this a lot more easier. So quantum computing is a, is a bit of a threat to a lot of um, the currently popular encryption schemes. And so what Stephen has been working on for a while uh, with some other uh, PhDs and postdocs. This is an international thing as well. Um, so there's some work going on in Australia is to try and come up with methods that aren't vulnerable to quantum computers. Um, and also, you know, this has sort of been taken seriously by government agencies. So for the last several decades, there's been a prediction that in the next, I don't know, five to 15 years, there'll be quantum computing. Nobody knows exactly when it will occur because there's all these technical issues that need to be solved. But it, who knows, it could be 15 years away. Um, even so, if you've got any any information that you want to keep secure, um, go government agencies are now thinking about what encryption methods do I need to use to make sure that the information that we've got is not um, open or vulnerable to be bro being broken and read in 15 years time, say. Nobody knows when they're going to come about. So it is um, a problem that's being taken seriously now for, for future proofing, you know, the ability to protect data. Um, so there are, I think this is sort of an area that would be good uh, to be aware of. Again, that sort of, if you're reliant on other people's systems, um, you don't want to be caught short with this kind of stuff, right? So if you're doing, uh, there's lots of discussion of decentralized networks, so having databases that are distributed with local control and storage. Um, well, these also need th those security elements um, considered as well. At least somebody thinking about um, pressing the upgrade button or whatever it might be. <laughs> to make sure that uh, you know the data remains secure and a lot of the discussions are around you know how computing there are all sorts of opportunities that are open for all sorts of organizations you know I think Graham's working in the 5G area but also space related stuff right so there's lots of discussion about it's not just internet payments but things like the internet of things devices communicating with one another or um, infrastructure for for energy related projects or anything like that so any there are a large potentially large number of uh, iwi projects or maori related organizations that would be interested in you know future proofing the protection of data with these cryptographic schemes um, so that's you know that's one side of the practical stuff but also you know it's an area where it would be great to get some sort of expertise because somebody's going to be commercializing these mm. cryptographic schemes. So why not us? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, exactly. Having the opportunity to ensure that our people are taken care of. What do you think the threat is for us in the future with um, uh, this space? Do you think we need to explore it further alongside Stephen and the research space for us as Māori? There, there are a couple of different things because, you know, things like internet banking won't fall over. There'll be some mm -hmm. slick behind the scenes um, upgrade so that browsers will talk with servers and it'll be quite transparent for us. 
but it's those other places where uh, in things like if you've got distributed databases or um, blockchain based databases where there's data that's sitting around that ought to be secure um, but it's it's sort of potentially sitting somewhere where it might be vulnerable to somebody else who's interested in getting at that data um, in the future right mm -hmm. so it's that having that data that's no longer uh, protected potentially floating around um, so I'm not sure I guess that's that's a question about threats you know it might be good to go for distributed networks for you know immediate you know Maori control over Maori data but also be careful <laughs> about these other cyber security threats as well that need to be monitored when you've got these distributed sets of data in different places mm. well thank you Dino Nimahiki Akwe um I've just received a text from Graham he is going to join us shortly but I also thought that I would I, <sighs> I think one of the opportunities we have as Mo the Māori Advisory Board is working alongside our tangata tauiwe and our tangata tiriti partners. And you've been in this space for a long time in the academic space um, and your relationships in the industry space. Um, where do you think and, and well, how do you feel we are perceived as Māori in these spaces and how do you think the relationship can be strengthened so that our people are taken care of? and our data is taken care of. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting one, you know, being teaching in a university. And, and one thing, even with these projects is how do you, uh, some of these projects sort of seem like they're quite lab based and there is an interest to want to commercialize stuff, but um, often you kind of end up with projects that are quite theoretical and it feels like there's a bit of distance between you know what's going on in these labs and what's going on on the ground so um having i think you know forums like this where we can get um, a group of us together just to sort of you know keep a a direction i guess or you know keep a, an eye on what's important um is great um you know to get feedback about what what are the important things to be to keep in mind you know, for, for Māori and Māori organisations. Um, how are we perceived? It feels sometimes that there's, you know, there's an awareness of things like Māori data sovereignty principles, but there's a gap between, you know, understanding some of the concepts and putting it into practice. So there's, you know, if there are good case studies you know good examples of success stories i think you know that would be quite useful for for modeling what might be good going forward because i think there's good intention but good intention doesn't always cash out and good results so um there's still that gap between you know having the frameworks <laughs> and and having the operationalization you know having the right people in the right place um Yeah, I, I mean, there's plenty. <laughs> there's plenty that could be said there. Is that, is that all right for now? That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Because it was one of the things that I found um, that was really instrumental in terms of our partnership with the Māori Advisory Board and our researchers was um, ensuring that everything that we shared with our tangata tiriti partners and our tangata tohi, we was so that we could build their awareness of our space and how our critical priorities can align with our the research space and sometimes um, a lot of the time with these spaces in research and even in the industry when we have those partnerships um, we have to take a lot of time to wānanga um, and I think our group is, is still finding its feet at times, just like many of the others. Um, Manukura Toa are the same, Tupatua figuring out their partnership with Microsoft, where we really find our space um, and we understand each other. And I'm just really grateful that um, yourself and Graham and Vanessa, who has been a champion in our space for a long time, um, 
have been working either in the academic research space or in the industry space, um, as well as many others that we can see on this webinar too. So, namahi kia koto mō ngā pōtai, um, mō ngā tūhuki, um, tēnā rā atu kia koto. So, <clears throat> now that our bits are taken care of, um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I can see our, our surprise guest. So the suggestion that I have as the facilitator, and I feel that tikanga Māori when you're the facilitator, sometimes you can make some really, um, you know, vivid tonos and, and suggestions and decisions. So I've decided to make the decision that for this recording, we'll stop it shortly. Um, and we will add Graham in a later time. And then for everyone else that had the opportunity to come today, um, I'll ensure that I give Graham some really difficult questions and I'll add it to this recording and um, everyone can see the full picture of our Māori Advisory Board um, from Daniel, Graham and myself. So namahi kia koutou. Um, thank you all for those that attended today. Um, and again, a big mihi to um, Vanessa that was in this space before I was lucky enough to inherit it. Um, and tukua na mihi ki a koe um, i te uh, kaimahi, i ngā kaimahi um, ki roto i tēnei webinar um, e Natalie. Tukua na mihi ki a koe e hoa, um, e te tuahine. Thank you for arranging us today to uh, partake in this kōrero. Um, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the week. Um, and Graham, you are not off the hook, buddy. <laughs> you are not off the hook. Um, but namahi kia koutou. Thank you, Daniel. Kia ora. Thank you for joining us. Kia ora, Bridget. Kia ora koutou.